today I want to talk about mornings. How are your mornings? This has changed my life. The quality of my mornings has changed my life. And I want to talk about setting the tone for your day with your morning. How's that going? What are your mornings like? Do you roll out of bed and grab your phone and just start scrolling crap and lay there? I'm telling you, if you are doing that, you are wasting so much energy. You are setting the tone for your day to be completely out of control. Just whatever comes my way is what I'm going to be thinking about today. It, it's sloppy. It feels sloppy. And I used to do that and I get it and I'm not trying to shame anybody. I'm just trying to share what can happen if you change this. Okay. This is not my nature. I have never been a morning person by nature. My nature is night owl. Okay. My nature, I am not actually a rigid person. I'm heavily motivated by fun. I'm very squirrel ish by nature. Okay. So this is something that I have patterned in and I'm telling you, if I can do it, anyone can do it because it is not natural to me, but this is what the power of a morning routine has brought to my life and getting up early and setting the tone. And the very first thing is don't get on your phone for the first hour of being up. If you will just, if that is the only thing you take from this whole live, besides all the other awesome stuff I'm going to share, if you can just not get on your phone and let yourself freaking think that is the most creative time of the day. And if you're taking that creativity and the things that can be stirring inside of you and you're just spending it on social, now all of a sudden you're thinking about glute active, you know, that's my social media feed. You're thinking about why the glutes get inhibited. It's just like you're getting taken on these roads instead of staying in your power and what's coming through you intuitively. So that's the first thing. Stay off your phone for the first hour of waking up. Like build that habit. And you might, like if you go to the bathroom and you go to the bathroom and you just sit there scrolling on your phone, stop. Don't take the phone into the bathroom with you. Put it down. <laughs> okay, that's the first thing. Staying in your power. Second, getting up consistently at the same time. If you will make like a come hell or high water, this is what time I wake up, you will fix your night times eventually. So I always say nothing that builds your life is happening after nine o'clock at night. It's not. It is wasted time that could be sent, spent sleeping, making it easier to have healthy body weight, mental health, energy levels, all those things that get wasted through the endless scrolling and stupid BS that's not doing anything for your life except stressing you out and making it harder for you to go to sleep. Next. So mine is five. I get up at five. And actually, I've been shocked to see that as I've patterned this in, my body, like this morning, I woke up at 445. My body will just wake up. I, that shocks me. <laughs> but my body will just wake up a little bit before my alarm. So have your set time. And then what do you, what, where does it go from there? This is what I mean by setting the tone. Because if you will implement some sort of routine into your morning where it's like, I do this. It's this message to yourself of like, I take care of my shit. So instead of just like moseying around, watching the news, watching, you know, whatever, <sighs> staying in your power. So what I do is I get up at five and I give myself until 530. And yes, it is like that. Yes, I do have actual times in my head and it's not stressful. It's actually awesome. It actually reduces stress because I know what the plan is and I just fill it in. So I have until 530 to get all my clothes on, make my bed. Are you making your bed? Make your freaking bed. It's just, it's like a symbol to yourself of like, I take care of my shit, right? And it's really nice to get into that night. So make your, I make my bed, brush my teeth, you know, get my workout clothes on, whatever. And then and make my coffee. And then I sit down at five by five thirty. sometimes a little earlier. Today was earlier and I meditate for 10 minutes. And if you have not included meditation consistently in your life, I know for sure it's because you're not doing it first. <laughs> I have tried any meditators out there did that whole like I'll meditate later thing. No, you won't. No, you will not. And I don't think it's a super smart time to meditate because in the morning, that's when you're the most creative and you're the most tapped in. So, um, I won't go into like brainwave stuff, but look into it. And so meditating for 10 minutes, I like to use Zen spray from John Laurence. If you get that, there's a link on my uh, discounts page on my website. If you get that, it burns. Okay. So I warned you. Okay. <laughs> but it like drops me into my parasympathetic and I go deep 
really deep. And I do silent meditation, but if that's too much for you, do guided, but do something that anchors you, connects you to yourself. What's up, Wendy? In the mornings, okay, connect to yourself. I can't encourage this enough. It is life-changing. Because you know how we talk about creating our lives and not just existing in it? When are you gonna actually do that? When? Because as soon as I'm going to the gym now, it's like, that's kind of like almost over for me, right? I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna come home, shower, get some food, get to work. Like there's no, there's no life creation stuff happening or really tapping into my soul except for just little tiny moments. So next is meditation. Then a gratitude practice. I shared in my stories today some of my personal development program that I've done multiple times because I, <laughs> I still get stuff out of my own program. Um, so I do three pieces of written gratitude. And if you think you're... If you think you're grateful, I know we're all grateful on certain levels, but if you're not actively practicing it, it goes by the wayside so quick because we are programmed to have negative bias in life as a survival mechanism. So it is real easy to only notice the negative. So we have to actively exercise our gratitude muscle, so to say, by actively, proactively identifying things that we're grateful for. And then I write and my clients, we write how we feel when we think about those things. So there's, this is like a super hack. You know why? Not only is the gratitude going to bring you positive feelings, it puts you in abundance mindset. I heard from my guides one time, the more you see what you already have, the more you have, <laughs> right? So if you're feeling like not good enough, like gratitude is the biggest, like don't have enough, not doing a good enough job, blah, blah, blah. Gratitude is the key to get out of that mindset. So it's like, oh my gosh, especially when I'm stressed. It is like so important. Um, and then how you feel when you think about things taps you into your emotions. How are you feeling right now? If you guys can humor me, put throw it in the chat. How are you feeling right now? Do you know? Because most of what I found is like, we have no freaking idea how we're feeling. We are like very behind as a human collective on being connected to our emotions because they've been poo-pooed from society and sometimes they're big and we don't want to feel them so we just we just numb out all right so if you have binge eating alcohol stuff or other things that you do to numb out tv whatever escape this is something that <laughs> hungry i love it yes low carb barbie <laughs> um i relate you feel fantastic good kim glad to hear that i feel actually connected to you guys and I feel happy and I feel grateful that I get to connect with all of you guys living all over the world. That is so cool. <laughs> um, and grateful, grateful for, to myself actually for the things that I've implemented in my life that have brought a lot of peace and joy and abundance. So knowing how you feel when you actively identify that every day, it taps you into your emotions and you become more emotionally in touch. I'd say maybe emotionally intelligent if we want to go that way, but it's true. Okay, next, some sort of consistent personal development practice. This is why I like programs. This is why I made one for my clients. This is why I purchase other mindset coaches programs because I find that if I don't do that, it's just like all over the place. It's like, oh yeah, maybe I'll listen to that course or maybe, you know, some other random thing on health or speaking. I'm doing a speaker course right now. It's like, it's just not, it's not direct. It's not, uh, it, it doesn't have a plan that's bringing me somewhere with like focusing on what I want to create in my life. So some sort, but you can do whatever you want, obviously, but some sort of consistent personal development practice. Okay. And then I move Then I get my butt right here into this building right here and I freaking move and play. And so that flow, getting up early, having a consistent wake up time, doing some sort of consistent practice, making your bed, staying off your phone. Wendy, I'm so happy to hear that you're feeling happy. What time is it, Wendy, over there in the UK? It's like evening right now. Um, having something set like that, it actually removes so much stress, right? Because like what I find, anytime I want to implement something into my life, if I don't have it scheduled in somehow, it's this like chronic stressor of God. I used to be like that with exercise when I was out of shape. I was like, yeah, God, I work out sometime today. 
that's a stressor and the consistency is going to suck because you're trying to squeeze it in instead of prioritizing it. Oh, it's 3.20 p.m. in Belgium and 2.20 in the UK. All right, it's 7.20 over here. Nice. Um, how's the future, guys? How's the future looking? <laughs> I have clients in Australia, you know, periodically and I'm, sometimes I'm calling them and it's the next day. I'm like, what is it like in the future? <laughs> um... So that's all guys. I just wanted to like put, make a little push for having a consistent time that you wake up, right? If you will commit to that, you will fix your nighttime and you might get sleep deprived everyone. Like when you're starting, it's like, yeah. and you will learn and it will help you make boundaries in your evening. I don't hang out with my friends on weeknights ever. I don't run to the store at seven o'clock at night. It's like, nope, game over. Like, no way I'm doing that. Like, cause at eight o'clock I take my melatonin and my magnesium. Stop car. <laughs> and I'm, it's just like wind down time because I know I'm getting up at five. So out of self love, I will fix my nights, right? So I can start getting sleep, but highly recommend doing that. It is so powerful. Um, Hannah needed to connect with this when fighting the idea of setting a morning routine. Thank you. Yes, do it. I can't encourage it enough. Do you use a regular alarm clock instead of a phone? I don't. I use my phone. I, I have, I feel like I have good boundaries on my phone. And you know what? You know what will get you consistent with this? Try it for a week. Okay, try having a morning routine for a week. And don't pressure yourself, but just notice how you feel those days. And then when you inevitably don't do it because you're a human being, notice how you feel when you don't do it. And if you will, ju if it's just that without judgment or pressure, it, it will get rid of this little inner rebel because you're like, oh, I don't have to, but it's like, man, I want to, I love feeling like that. I want that. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. I, I, thank you. And I know it works because I do it myself and I've done it with clients over and over and I see the power that it brings. Right. So have that set time right? Have that set time that you wake up and, and then have a plan of action, right? I do 10 with high, our higher morning routine is 10 minutes of meditation. Let me know if you guys can still hear me. <laughs> um, three pieces of written gratitude, how I feel when I think about those things and some sort of personal development program that only takes like five minutes. Um, do I go to sleep at the same time every day as well? Yep. Nine o'clock nine o'clock. Right. And it's communicating that. And that's why I start going to bed at eight. Cause I have kids and I love that they love to come into my room. And actually, if you will start going into your room earlier, if you have kids, it it's so amazing. It's been so good because they, it's this quiet time. I'm like, everybody has to go upstairs for us. All we have, I've got, I do I have six bedrooms upstairs in my house. Right. So we're all up. No five. Sorry. We're all up there. So it's just kind of this quiet, like together time and they'll mosey in and out of my room and tell me about things that are going on in their life, but I don't want them doing that at nine 30. And I am clear about that. I'm like, guys, nine, nine is lights out time for me. So they know, but we're starting to head up there at eight. So it was like a full hour of like getting ready for bed, kids taking showers, coming in, talking, blah, 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 winding down. Um, so yeah, and never, I'm not like perfect. Sometimes I go a little past that, but it's pretty close. Um, I'm lost without a routine. Yeah, it just, it's so stressful. If you have no routines in your life, everything is like, has to be a decision in that moment all the time. That is so stressful. Get rid of that and have, it's, I'm not that rigid with the rest of my life, but like my mornings and evenings, it's like, yes, dude, it's boundaries, right? And I have just little set things in play and the rest is very bendy, very bendy. Um, the, the morning is the best. Whole house is quiet. Yes. And the best way to start your day. It's so quiet. Yes. It's so quiet. It's so powerful. It's just this. If you haven't experienced this, I really, really want you to experience this. It's so good. And your internal clock will change so that you like actually start feeling very alive when you wake up. If you feel like, bleh, like a train hit you when you woke up, I promise you it's because you have an inconsistent sleep schedule. If you will fix this and, and start with that consistent wake up time and you will start to fix your evenings. Okay. You will start waking up. I wake up now feeling like da, 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 da. I never thought I could be like that as a lifelong night owl. I just, it has been absolutely mind blowing to me, but that's how our bodies work. They're trainable like dogs, right? Like if you have a dog, <laughs> you know that your dog kind of knows 
when it's time to do this, when food comes, you know, there's a like Pavlov effect. <laughs> and that's how our bodies are with our chemicals. It's like, do, 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 Tara gets up at five, time to send cortisol and wake her up, you know, and it's just awesome. What time do I eat dinner? Um, in Europe, we eat at like 7.30 or 8. Yeah, yeah, you guys do eat very late. I personally, I lived in Madrid for like four and a half months in a study abroad, so I'm familiar with that. It was like nine. <laughs> um we lived with a family. So, you know, they, they, we just did whatever they did, but, um, I eat dinner usually around five ish, you know, and I try to cut off. My, I want to stop eating about three hours before bed. So I'm generally done eating by six. And sometimes it's earlier if I got really full at like four. So, I mean, do whatever works for you. I, and I obviously I understand that's incredibly cultural, but from a health perspective, it is really ideal if you can stop eating a couple hours before bed so your body is done digesting so it can go into repair mode when you're sleep sleeping instead of digestion mode. And if you get used to that, you'll see the difference because every once in a while I'll, have, I'll eat later, I'm at an event or something like that, and I'll wake up and I'm like, dude, I just... First of all, my stomach hurts when I wake up, which is really weird for me. Like, I don't have any gut issues or get stomach stuff, but that does happen if I eat late and I just don't feel as recovered. Um, what are the programs that have really changed your life? Um, for me, uh, Tony Childs, uh, keep elevated.com, his stuff. Um, and then my, honestly, like my, my program and higher coaching is everything that I have done. So I have the work of Byron Katie. I have inner child work. I have all of these different modalities that have really turned the needle for me inside my, it's called my Mount Everest journey, my personal development program. So that that's what I'm always doing in my coaching is pulling and like what turned the needle. And I actually have a little deal with Tony Child's program for people who graduate from my, finish my personal development. So i got that from him because I wanted my people to have that too. Um, made sleep routine a priority to get the next day optimization. Yeah, dude. Sleep is the, like the most powerful pre-workout, the most powerful mood stabilizer, the most powerful like diet pill. If you want good insulin sensitivity, hormone management, all of it, like it's sleep, baby sleep. Um, we wake up later and eat late. 5 PM is so early. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you could shift that if you're going to bed later, later and waking up later, like that's fine, you know? <laughs> um, all right, guys, that is all. Just want to encourage you to own your morning. Set the tone for your day. Set the tone, baby. Don't get on your phone. Do not let other people direct how your day is going to go, where your mind's going to go the second you wake up. Boundaries. No. Down. Put it down. Go pee without a phone in your hand. <laughs> okay. No phone for the first hour. Institute a morning routine. Have a set wake up time. You're going to have to be a little militant with it at first, but damn dude, after I've been doing this for years now, it is the best. It's on autopilot. It's not hard anymore. Great to see you too, Wendy. Love you so much. What am I doing in the gym today? Let's see. Wednesdays is glutes and abs, glutes and abs. So um, when I have my kids, which I do this week, my morning routine gets a little wonky with the workouts because <laughs> I want to be there when my high school kids leave, um, which that flows with my nor normal routine. But then I just go walk uphill while my 12 year old and I, 10, he'll be 10 tomorrow, um, are waking up. Uh, and, and then I come home, take them to school and then I lift. So it's like not super optimal, but when you create your life, I've created my life. So I have boundaries before my calls start so that I can do that. I don't start calls till 11 AM. So it allows me to do that. And so I've created things like that in my life. It's just like, how am I going to make this work? And having that plan is like, I just know that's how it flows. It's just, it's stress relieving. So I'm not like, shit, I got to hurry and do gluten. And I did not only got to do two and like, ugh trying to eliminate that kind of stress like crazy in my life. Yeah. I'm not a routine person. If you guys know anything about neurotyping, I'm a 2A. Like <laughs> the word for 2A is variety. Like we love change. We are squirrel people. Like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. But those routines have eliminated so much stress in my life. And so I know if I can do it, y'all can do it. Okay. Much love. Gotta go get my walk on.